Okay, so let's start. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Lucien Balea. I'm uh, working at RT. Uh, RT is a French power transmission system operator, and I'm leading the open source program office. Hello, my name is Benoît Janson. I'm also working for RTE. I work in the IT department in the uh, architect uh, department. Yeah, and I'm part of the open source program office. Okay, so um, the purpose of our talk today is to highlight uh, um, our uh, open source uh, strategy at RT that we uh, engaged uh, together with the LF Energy Foundation and uh, show you how through this means we are targeting uh, to build a new power grid uh, software control architecture and how this ecosystem of projects and initiatives also uh, relying on uh, modern upstream software uh, will allow us to, to achieve our goals. Um, but maybe as a start, a few words about RT. So we, we, our main mission is to uh, operate, maintain and develop the high level and extra high level uh, voltage uh, power grid in, in France. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, our main mission today is to support and enable the energy transition. So uh, an environmental friendly power system for the future, while still enabling uh, economic and social prosperity. So, so having a, a power supply that is reliable and affordable. And in this context, we have to face drastic changes uh, in the power system and that has huge impacts on the way we perform our activities. Uh, among which, so we have to prepare to the massive development of distributed renewable energy sources. Uh, we need to leverage more flexibility and the demand side and the consumption side to, uh, to cope with the variability of, uh, for instance, uh, renewable resources. We have to, in order to decarbonize the economy, we have to decarbonize transportation. And one way to do so is to shift to electric mobility. So we, we need to prepare to the massive growth of electric transportation. And uh, all this will need to think about new smart services with uh, a growing number of actors across the power grids. And to achieve this transformation, we believe, but we are not the only one, there is a common belief in the industry that we need to rely on software. So we need massive investments into new digitalization uh, technologies. We need solution, better solutions to, to monitor, to control, to optimize, to understand what happens and to transact. And all this in a future power system of systems of growing complexity. So then the core question is how, how to, to meet the, the power transformation, the power system transformation challenges. And, and this is a, a mission of primary importance. Why is that? If, if, you, if you look at the reports of the International Panel on Climate Change, they analyze the consequences of global warming uh, on several, let's say, economic or social indicators. And th these reports show that even if we, um, let's say, uh, reach the ambitious targets that we have, so 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is extremely ambitious, the report shows that the consequences on those indicators will worsen in the future. So we are, today we are in a yellow area and it will go reddish. So for sure, as a company, we don't want to be a blocking factor on this path to decarbonization. So we want to support it. And at the same time, we need to preserve the operational performance. Why that? Because our future economies will rely more and more on, on, on power. And so we need to ensure that the power supply uh, is affordable and is reliable as it was in the past. 
maybe to be a bit more specific, what are the pain points that you are facing today? So just two examples to illustrate that. Um, so the first image is, is a typical control center uh, at, at RT. And uh, so already today, these control centers has a lot of software. But this used to be monolithic software uh, that is not really agile, uh, flexible, that takes years to specify, acquire, and then it's like stable. What you can also see is that in these control rooms, you have a proliferation of uh, screens uh, because each system, monolithic system, uh, comes with its own screen and it's very difficult to integrate those and to combine the information. So interoperability, modularity is quite poor. In the lower image, you can see uh, typically a, a protection and automation system that you find at the edge of the grid in the power substations. And here, these equipments are hardware devices that embed software, but deploy as hardware. So meaning that anytime you want to change something, you need to go to the field. Um, so here again, we, 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 we see um, some, uh, let's say, we need to enable more flexibility, et cetera. So, so maybe thinking about software defined things. And all that results in uh, an insufficient speed of innovation. And then we learned about open source and especially we got inspired by other industries and how they managed to, to leverage open source collaborations to get tremendous acceleration for their innovation. And one example that we cite quite often is the ONAP project from uh, LF Networking. And this is uh, in the telecommunications world, the operators are to prepare to, to 5G, to go to 5G, and they realize that doing like in the past would be extremely costly. So at and in particular decided to, to shift to software defined uh, telecom grids and, um, and, and, and when they wanted to go into that direction, their vendor ecosystem was not really happy. So they realized that they had to do it themselves. But then instead of doing their own solution, they found other uh, networking operators that had the same vision, same strategy. China Mobile is among themselves. And, and, and uh, progressively, this project has grown and they attracted uh, many other carriers. When we met them, it was in 2018, and they, they said that they had uh, uh, like um, carriers representing 70% of the world subscribers. And the project managed to, 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 to gather 2,500 uh, developers. So this is a kind of leverage that makes also se made, made sense in the telecom industry, but would really make sense in our industry as well. So basically, pr probably most of you know this, we, we are building our open source capacity in order to accelerate through collaboration, re reusing that exists, benefiting from better modularity, interoperability, evolutivity, uh, fostering innovation. And uh, what is also important is that if we look at our transformation, the transformation that we need to accomplish, we will need to have many diverse competencies in, uh, involved. And we believe that we cannot hire all the people that we need to, to achieve this. So access through collaboration to a wider range and a more diverse range of skills is, is, is very important. And of course, reducing lock-in, uh, that, that impedes uh, innovation is, is key as well. So in 2018, uh, we had the chance to partner with the Linux Foundation and to become a founding member of LF Energy. 
and uh, that was a key step to launch this open source strategy and also to start growing the ecosystem. And actually this has been uh, very successful so far because so this was our first summit in 2018. It was in Edinburgh, so next to the Open Source Summit Europe. And uh, Jim uh, came uh, to, to the room uh, in order to, to launch the, the initiative. And uh, at that time, we felt, uh, we felt pretty alone. But if we look now today, uh, the uh, foundation has grown significantly. Aliander has joined uh, very soon the initiative and we have the same mindset, we have the same ambitions and we are collaborating together on several projects. And uh, most, most recently, it was announced this week, uh, Shell also joined LFN Energy as strategic uh, member. So that's uh, a, great, uh, a great progress. So, h how do we see the, the um, leverage of open source? So, what we want to do is to change the way we build software in order to go through to different architectures. And uh, basically, we will we'll need to follow maybe the same um, steps as the uh, telecommunication industry. So this slide, and maybe you have already seen this, is not from us, it's from uh, RP Shripura from LF Networking. So going through those, um, like this innovation pipeline, so, so virtualizing the functions that are performed today by hardware components into software, disaggregating those functions to get more modularity, on top of which we will be able to build more automation automation with more interconnection across the processes, assemble this into microservices and build the solutions and platforms that we need. So now I give the hand to Benoit. So let's start with the blank, blank page because actually that was what we had at the very beginning. So we made the diagnosis that we needed to get faster when we understood that open source was something that we could leverage to help us. And open source doesn't mean only bringing code into GitHub. Open source means mainly for us building a community. And at the beginning, we had nothing. Nothing but these diagnoses and this willing to do a bit more. And uh, so we met the Linux Foundation, we started the Linux Foundation Energy, and soon at the very beginning, we were with Aliander. And so just where we were, RT and Aliander putting on the table one of their softwares that, uh, and, and, uh, in the energy. So that was Operator Fabric, Greek Exchange Fabric, and Possible. That's the software that we put on the table. And as you can see, the page is still almost blank, and we have three little projects in the middle. They are not that little, actually, for us. So we had nothing in common between these three projects, nothing, no connection at all between them. But they were in the energy industry. They were open source. They were industrial grade, and that's important. We are not just gamer, we, we have critical process that we need to handle. So we need to have really industrial grade, grade tools. And that were uh, initiated in companies con convinced that building community around co open source is the best answer to the challenges that we were facing. So that was our seed at the very beginning. And uh, shortly after, uh, we had long discussion, mainly with Aliander, but with other uh, partners too. And we wanted to design a functional architecture just to, to, to be able to understand what would be our ecosystem in the future and where, where should we invest on. So that our functional architecture, we have five main boxes. Uh, here it's acquisition and control. So we are at the edge, very close to, uh, to, to the substations. And then we have central hubs 
to communicate to um, asset management, to system management, so that's where we have the, the control rooms. And then we have the customer and market that are connected to the uh, system management, but are also connected to the, to the field. So that's why they are close all together. And in the middle, we have something like shared <laughs> common tools. And if we put the project that we had at the beginning, that was it. And to pave a bit more, we duplicate some of them. Grid Exchange Fabric is here and also here because Grid Exchange Fabric has, has feature on, on both sides. That's the same for possible. That is here, so for uh, calculation and here also to design a substation. So that's, and we have Operator Fabric in the very middle. And now, uh, after a few years, we have 18 projects. So we can see that the, the functional architecture is now paved. There is a, a blank space here for the um, asset management, but we have projects uh, everywhere. So that's the seed as a uh, grow, grow a bit and uh, significantly, and we paved um, a large part of our functional architecture. There are giant holes still, so there are still work to be done, don't worry. So if you want to come, if you want to invest on that, feel free to come and invest on that. Uh, we have friends here that are on, uh, I put you here, Everest. Between the, um, the acquisition and control and the customer, uh, are you okay with that? <laughs> and um, now, just I want to focus on the components that we are using uh, within RTE. So these are the only components of, the, of this whole map that we are using today. And um, what I want to sh highlight here with this slide is that all of these components are connected. And for me, that's uh, really a criteria to say that we have, uh, that's a, yeah, a first step of maturity. We are able to connect all our uh, open source components. So it's not yet true, but uh, in their roadmap, this, uh, this project will be fully connected in a in few months or a few years for some. So that's where we are now. And uh, so we, we hope that in the near future, we will be able to, to pave all the, all the um, <coughs> functional architecture with connected softwares. We won't use them all because uh, in RTE, we have our own business and we are not involved by all of that, uh, that project. But we, yes, that's a goal now to be able to connect all the project all together to have uh, something meshed in our ecosystem. me to do this yeah one. okay sure. okay and um, so besides the fact that uh, within the LF energy uh, ecosystem we are not only uh, hosting individual projects but we are having there a space where those projects can discuss interfaces they can discuss good practices uh, which are not specific to the energy sector, so good practices in terms of governance, in terms of compliance. Um, Cybersecurity will also be a very important topic for for the period to come because we we operate uh, critical infrastructure, vital infrastructure. Um, so there is a space to 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 help the pro projects to to make connections and then also benefit from the networking of that. So the value of the project increases if it can leverage also the adjacent projects. But besides that, we also have the chance uh, to be part of the Linux Foundation and uh, to have a privileged access to other initiatives uh, where we can find uh, modern upstream technologies that could fit our needs with with small uh, adaptations. And uh, this is part of the innovation pipeline that I presented, but also part of, of what we are doing. So for instance, the projects that operate at uh, more, let's say, central uh, level uh, are designed to be uh, based, to have a, a microservice-based approach to be cloud native and uh, they, they, they use uh, Kubernetes uh, as, as uh, really the, the um, reference uh, orchestrator. 
um, at the other side, so when we go to the edge in the substation, there, um, so the, the CPAS project's aim is to um, shift from uh, hardware-based automation systems for the automation and control system for the grid to software-defined systems. Uh, and uh, there, um, what we need is to have um, a real-time operating platform with high reliability uh, in order to host those critical functions that uh, are essential. So th those functions, for instance, they uh, need to react very fast in case an incident happens, like uh, a short circuit, uh, lightning striking a power line, so, so, so. and they need to, re uh, to be very reliable because they, they are there to protect equipment, but not only equipment, also people. And there, um, we made some connections with the, the embedded and virtualization world in order to work on a reference platform for this edge uh, virtualization. And uh, you may find some, some projects that you know uh, here as well. In between, we have um, a need for um, a multi-protocol gateway that is essential because we have various protocols in our industry, legacy protocols, newer protocols that are coming from, from let's say, innovation, newer protocols, not only specific to, to, to the power business, but, but from coming from other industries. And we need to have this gateway to translate between protocols and to ease the integration of new building blocks into, into the big picture. And there, we managed to, to adapt, to adjust the LFH Fledge project um, that the main, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, purpose of this project was to, to fulfill the needs of the industry 4.0. So, so having sensors uh, uh, on the field and then gathering the, the information. And with small effort, we could adapt this project to, to make it uh, a multi-protocol gateway that is also applicable to, to, to power systems. Yeah, so, yeah. What's interesting also with Fletch, so that's an IoT platform. And uh, so we used it for the multi-protocol gateway, but now we have also other actors that are interested in, in using Fletch power. So the difference between Fletch and Fletch power is mainly only the logo. So at the beginning, Fledge was in the Linux Foundation edge and we wanted to have uh, the visibility of the Linux Foundation energy to promote the activity on the f on Fletch power. So it's not a fork, it's, a, it's a really a collaboration between two, two, two foundation, two projects that are actually the same project with two, two labels on it. And um, we wanted first to focus on the multi-protocol gateway, but now we see that there are other uh, use cases that could be held by uh, by Fledge and that are of interest for us in the in the power industry. And uh, we are we are yeah we will uh, integrate this new use case in in Fledge power in the near future. And that's uh, yeah if you want to collaborate also on that, please, please come. That's really fun to have this uh, IoT world connecting to that big, big system that is the, 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 the power system. Is there anything you want to add? Yeah, maybe as, as a conclusion, we have uh, one chance in our industry is that uh, we are uh, a bit behind in terms of open source. Uh, that means that there have been front-running industries that uh, went before us and found solutions to many of our problems and both in terms of uh, proper governance, uh, how to manage uh, uh, compliance, how to manage security, but uh, also from a technical perspective. Now, they, many of these technologies that come from telecommunications, from IoT, etc., they appear to be uh, 
uh, the relevant uh, fu future technologies that we need uh, in the power industry. So, uh, yes, that's a great opportunity for us. And that's where the one of the magic of open source collaboration is, is that um, you get onboarded by the eco existing ecosystem and the acceleration is quite impressive. In fact, you, 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 you step in and, and reach a stage that would not be reachable uh, doing alone in, 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 in many years. You know, if you need to build all these competencies internally, it's, all, it's almost uh, impossible. So, um, yeah, so we have um, a great mission. We have uh, a great framework for collaboration and uh, we invite uh, any interested contributors, users uh, to to join, discuss, share their ideas, and be part of this uh, of this journey. Thank you. <laughs> Questions, maybe. Uh, I think I need to repeat it. Okay, so the question is, uh, is our biggest challenge the fact that we have in the power industry uh, uh, a small number of uh, big players that do, do not want to go uh, open source or the opposite, so many, many small players that, that do not want to, to go. Um, so I think depending on uh, the segment, um, it, it, it differs. So, for instance, in the transmission distribution grid uh, business, um, on the end user side, so grid operators, uh, I would say that it's uh, fragmented, relatively fragmented compared to uh, what you may find in uh, other industries like uh, networking. You have those big giant companies while you are, we, are, we are smaller companies. Uh, on the vendor side, technology vendor side, uh, we have um, a, a, a small number of, of, of big players that uh, indeed that, that and for them uh, this uh, open source shift, it's a challenge because uh, it it's impacts the business model. Uh, it also impacts uh, the portfolio that they have developed and that uh, may not fully fit in that, in that vision. Um, but at the same time, I guess that they understand the stake and also the fact that, that uh, looking at what happened in other industries, the open source model is quite powerful. So it may, it may change. Um, I also see open source an, as an opportunity for uh, smaller actors because the entry barriers are lower and, and uh, those um, smaller companies may also bring a uh, lot of new innovation into the ecosystem. So, so um, yeah, that could be a, an opportunity. Um, the other challenge that we have is that we are um, an industry that is used to have a very reliable activity, meaning you have to, 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 to reach 99.9, etc. cetera, uh, uh, reliability in the power supply. So that also means the drawback of that reliability is that we are quite conservative and cautious, uh, in, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, companies, culture, uh, et cetera. So, so we also need to, to go through this barrier and, and explain uh, how those open source innovative model can fit with the requirements of a more conservative um, activity.
No, I'm okay. So you see that there is a gap between what we need and what we have today, and where should we invest first? Actually, I think that we invest first where we need it. So uh, that 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 was that was our priority where it was uh, uh, critical, where it was uh, our core business really. So that's. Uh, uh, we invest a lot at the substation level, as you can see. Uh, that's where we need to have critical uh, uh, software and a lot of innovation. So CPATH is an enab enabler for that because it enables the, the virtualization of uh, various functions that we would have at this level. Um, uh, Compass is also something that uh, enables the arrival of the 61850 protocol, uh, 61850 standards in the substation. So that's uh, with Compass we can configure our devices. Um, so we discussed already uh, fledge power. Uh, so fledge power will be very useful because, and and that's uh, that was uh, when we decided to. To, to make this project, so the multi-protocol gateway in open source, that was also the, the the bet that this will be. This is a very small tool, and this will this is useful for everybody in our industry. Everybody needs that because we all have a pretty long story. We all have, all have a legacy of uh, protocols, and it's 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 complicated to to shift a big system like a SCADA, but just the protocol gateway, something that is just translating something pretty simple to something pretty simple that everybody knows and uh, I, I'm very confident in the fact that fetch power can 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 be get spread the, the industry uh, pretty efficiently in a short time I'm not answering your, your question I know <laughs> maybe for for this part asset management that is purely blank today um, it's maybe because we have also uh, it's possible to find on the market uh, in other industries a thing that can help us, uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know. But I realize when I draw uh, the, for this very presentation that <laughs> this was empty here, uh, and 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 that's inter interesting. Um, but yes, no, I, I don't think that's uh, uh, random. The fact that we have uh, the, the the project there, where where they where they are, and I think we still need to invest in, in this area. So that's uh, where the focus is. I think that we have time for maybe one more question, if any. If not, we finish five minutes in advance. It's not bad as well. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.